library with more than 4,000 photo and video related books, a cellar full of products, and two new lenses. This is a CineD special report from Sigma's new headquarters. CineD, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi, I'm Johnny from CineD, and I'm here with Yamaki san from Sigma. How are you? I'm fine, good. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. And thank you for having me here for the first time. Actually, I think there's an international outlet who is covering the new offices. Yes. And uh, thank you very much for visiting us. And thank you very much for having me for this interview. Thank you. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And before you sat down for the interview, your staff was very uh, welcoming and they showed me a little bit around. Mm -hmm. And this place, which is actually the opposite of the older office, is amazing. Thank you very much. Who had the idea, or let me start from the beginning, why actually you had a need for another office? First of all, uh, we just simply run out of the space. Uh, we've been keep uh, hiring uh, the new engineers, uh, especially we have been hiring a lot of uh, software engineers because we need a more or more and more software engineers uh, to develop the, our own cameras and also to develop the many farmers which support many new uh, camera systems. So uh, at the end, uh, we really literally run out of space and we couldn't put any desk for the new uh, employees. So we decided to move, uh, and uh, actually they built a new uh, office and then move to, move to the new location. It looks as if you put a lot of thinking into build, building these new offices. It has on one side two floors and on the other one four floors. How much of your time did you dedicate to actually think and design this place? Well, actually, this design did not come from me. The architect had proposed this idea to me, and I just approved it. But uh, I simply gave the, the uh, actually, I simply asked three things uh, to architect. The first thing is uh, the, I like to make the new office very comfortable for everyone, where all the employee wants to come to their office every morning you know, with, uh, with joy. Uh, the, I don't want anybody who reluctant to come to the office and uh, work in a very you know, uh, bad mood. I really want uh, the older employee work with full motivation. So this is number one, it's a very comfortable, nice place. Second is uh, uh, the, the, space, the, uh, the, the space where the older employee can see the uh, greens outside or sunshine or even feel the, the seasons because most of the uh, employees, are, the engineers are very young. So they may live alone uh, in a small apartment. So they, and they leave their uh, apartment very early morning. So maybe in, in the winter, they just keep shutting the, the curtain uh, or blind and then don't see the, the sunshine and work until evening. So if, the, if she or she can't see the sun or green outside, they cannot feel the season. So I really want to make the new office the place where everybody can feel the, the change of the season or change of the, uh, the greens, things like that. The third thing, third point is the, the place where the communication between employees uh, are more activated. Uh, we, in order to do the, the excellent work, I think the close and the frequent communication is the key. So I really uh, I wanted to achieve it and ask our architects to design the space so that we can communicate more frequently and the more in deeper level. And do you? finally have an office of your own? My office? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's the actually uh, lowest priority or I never think of, uh, uh, never thought of it because uh, I'm very happy to share the space with our engineers or our staff. 
first of all, that's my uh, you know, pleasure. I really want to work with our staff or engineers. Second, I really need to be educated or learn. I really need to learn from our engineers. Otherwise, I can't, you know, uh, can't come up with the new ideas. I, I really need to learn from our staff. So I don't have this office near my own office here. Uh, I, I have the desk in, in the, on the same floor as our engineer work. How about food? Your employees, do, do they have to worry about food or quality of food? How do you manage with this? Because at the end, it's quite a lot of people here. Yes, I think uh, the, the quality of food is very important. As I said, the, many of our engineers are young, so some employee may not be good at cooking by himself. So they may purchase the, the cooked food or maybe bento box at the convenience store, which is not good for the health. Of course, it's very delicious, so it's good to have that kind of stuff sometime, but uh, not for every day. So uh, preparing the, the warm, uh, healthy, good food uh, for lunch, I think it's very important for their, own, for their own life and also for their excellent work. There are two spots in this building which really captured my imagination. Mm -hmm. One is the library. Mm -hmm. Mm. And you have over there like 4,000 books related to photography, maybe hopefully also filming. Was it your idea to have, to have such a library there? And where, where are you getting all those books from? Actually, we've been collecting such a photo books uh, for several years already. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, you know, uh, put uh, those uh, books in the warehouse. But uh, uh, we started collecting the photo books uh, so that we can, you know, sh uh, so that the company can share photo books with our employees. Because our cameras and lenses are used to take photos or images or footage. So our industry is basically supported by the imaging culture. So without uh, the, uh, the knowledge about uh, photo culture or imaging culture or film culture, or without the respect to that culture, I don't think we can good, uh, uh, do a great excellent job. So even engineers, uh, they need to know the photo culture or imaging culture and have some kind of respect to the, the culture. And I think this leads to the respect to the, the artists, like uh, photographers or cinematographers, who are dedicated for or creating such a, uh, content. And the second place, which I really think this is the pinnacle of all this place, is the cellar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where you have actually, that's what I heard, every product that you've been manufacturing till now behind a very nice glass. Again, this is one of your ideas? Yes, uh, but uh, I've never imagined we eventually make such a huge cellar. Uh, my initial idea was a much smaller scale. But the, the, the idea was that uh, we, when we develop the product, we pay attention to every details of every product. And uh, we always put 100% uh, or 120% of our energy into each single product. But uh, uh, there is no place where our customers or business partners can see uh, such a, our um, passion in one place without any other noises. Noise may not be a great word, but uh, if you go to the, the attention. attention, yeah. Because if you go to the camera stores, uh, there are many other information like uh, Plyce or other companies, other brands' products or uh, some other posters. But uh, over there uh, in our cellar, uh, we just uh, show the product as is. 
uh, there is no other uh, information. So people can see and feel the passion uh, we input into the product and also feel the world that we wanted to create through products. I heard that in your father's time, the company used to make one lens a year. Maybe that's long time ago. Long time ago. Yes. At present time, you are producing quite a lot of lenses mm -hmm. and even cameras every year. You're not concerned that you will simply have no more space in the cellar for all those products? What then? Hmm. Probably we will run out of the space. So maybe we need to replace uh, the products from time to time. But uh, uh, still, uh, I don't think we should you know, uh, slow down, uh, slow down the, 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 the uh, yes, development of the new products. The, the, only through the free, you know, uh, the hard working for the new product development or new technology development, uh, I don't think we can survive. Uh, in order to be innovative, we have to, you know, uh, do something. We have to always do something, work on something, and uh, we can accumulate the, the experience, know-how, and uh, uh, technologies. So talking about offices and design is really great. Thank you. But the main reason when you're talking about moving forward all the time, the main reason that we are meeting is also because you just brought to the market two new lenses, two new art lenses, mm -hmm. 20 millimeter and the 24 millimeter. Yes. Both of them are rather fast, F1.4. Let's start with the 20 millimeter. And you know the, the full name. 20 millimeter F1.4 DGDN art. <laughs> yes. I'm waiting for the days that manufacturers will help me personally with more <laughs> engaging names, but that probably will not happen. Actually, DG is the name used for the, the lens for full frame camera, DN for mirrorless camera. So 20 millimeter F1.4 DGDN is uh, the lens designed for full frame mirrorless camera. And the focal length is 20 millimeter, of course, and the maximum aperture is 8.4. And this lens belongs to art series, which we prioritize the optical quality to the rest of the elements, design uh, factors. But this time you also try to exceed, and besides the quality of the glass, you also added some other features. Yes. Would you like to tell our audience a little bit about this lens? Yes, um, the, the first of all, it's much more compact and lighter than the exist, our existing 20 mm f1.4. We, we have the 20 mm f1.4, which was originally designed for DSLRs. It's much more compact and lighter. Uh, this is mainly because the, the flange back of the mirrorless camera is much shorter than DSLRs, which makes the, the design, the optical design, in, not easier, but uh, more suitable for the wide angle lens. That's why uh, we could make it much smaller and light, lighter. Uh, this is very good. And also uh, this lens can, is compatible with the front filter thread. Uh, the, our, uh, the existing 20 millimeter is only compatible with a rear uh, filter uh, uh, holder. So you can use both a front filter and a rear filter. And uh, there are some small uh, uh, function, uh, functionalities uh, to mainly to support the astrophotographers. Uh, for example, uh, we first implemented uh, a manual focus uh, lock switch uh, which completely uh, the focus ring inactive. Uh, for example, uh, normal uh, ast astrophotographers uh, set uh, the focus ring infinity, so they really don't want to you know, move the focus ring. But uh, if you go to the you know, nice spot to take the astrophotography, actually there are many phot astrophotographers, and someone may hit uh, the focus ring and uh, you know, confuse uh, the focus uh, the focus position. So. 
if you uh, switch, turn on the, the MF lock switch, uh, the, they don't need to worry about the focus shift anymore. Uh, and also, oh, we implemented uh, the uh, uh, lens heater retainer, which it, it, it's a, a, the very small place which, fit, uh, which the, the lens heater fit in. Uh, the many astrophotographers uh, use a lens heater to avoid the uh, condens uh, condensation on the lens element when they use, uh, take photos in winter. Uh, so, uh, we, the, with this uh, the retainer, uh, they don't need to worry about the uh, 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 accidental uh, you know, uh, uh, position change of the lens retainer. This lens comes in which mount? Uh, this lens uh, comes with L mount and Sony E mount, two mounts. Why no other popular mounts? What is preventing you from doing more? Well. Um, First of all, it's uh, for full frame uh, mirrorless camera. And uh, so right now we only support the full frame. Uh, uh, we only support the Sony E mount and L mount for full frame mirrorless cameras. So we prepare the two mounts. Uh, but uh, for the new mount, uh, I'm aware of the, the people's demand, uh, but uh, we are not yet ready for that. Was this lens also designed with Sony cameras in mind? Because those are obviously rather popular and you have the E-mount. Any other features that are solely designed to work with Sony cameras in this lens? Yes, uh, there's a function called the F-assist function, uh, which is implemented in the latest uh, Sony cameras such as FX6 and uh, A7 A4. Uh, this function allows the users uh, during the, the movie focus, uh, movie F mode, uh, allows the focus manually on the different subject. And even if they you know, uh, release the, the hand from the focus ring, the camera stay on the, uh, stay, uh, focus on the uh, selected subject. And uh, this new lens, new 20 millimeter, supports this function. Anything else about the lens? Of course, you can declick the aperture and so on. Those yes. are things that are, have been done before. This lens has the aperture ring first, and then uh, you have the, the declick mode, which is very important for the movie shooting. And this is a basic function which we implement in DGDN art lenses. And also, uh, this lens has uh, uh, the weather-resistant uh, uh, ceiling. And also focus uh, AF uh, lock button, uh, which you can lock the, the focus, but also you can customize this button uh, if the camera body allows. Great, and the second lens is the 24 millimeter. Yes. Specifications are rather the same, 1.4 and same series. Anything specific in this lens which you would like to indicate? Well, uh, the, the, the concept-wise, it's very similar. Uh, the, compared to the 24mm f1.4 for DSLRs, uh, it's, it's much more compact and lightweight, and the uh, optical performance is higher than uh, those, uh, the previous uh, or existing model. And uh, this lens also has the, the, the same function, uh, functionalities as uh, uh, the new 20mm f1.4 has, such as uh, aperture ring with decrease uh, switch or AF lock button or MF lock button, uh, except for uh, the, the, uh, the lens heat retainer. Uh, this lens does not have that uh, function, but the uh, basic functionality is very similar. Those two lenses are actually part of a wider family of prime lenses. So which one do you have now in, in this family? Uh, we have 35 mm f1.4 DGDN and also 85 mm f1.4 DGDN. So uh, with these two new lenses, we have now the four uh, f1.4 or prime uh, DGDN lenses. And also we have 35 mm f1.2 DGDN. So many products. I really hope that you have somewhere, maybe even at home, a big chart with all the lenses, all the apertures, generation one, generation two, and whatever is about to come, because it's a lot. 
sounds nice idea. <laughs> There's no way that I can end this interview without asking you about the Foveon mm -hmm. sensor, because so many people are asking us, so many people are kind of waiting. Mm -hmm. And I clearly remember you telling me that uh, in our last interview, it takes time, it's very demanding, it's at the end a technology that you are still experimenting with. And when it will be ready, it's probably going to be mostly for photographers and not for video. But I'd be very thankful if you can update our audience. Where are we now with the Foveon sensor? Yes. Uh, the, as you said, it's quite you know, uh, challenging uh, to develop the, the new sensor from the scratch, but uh, we are still working on it. Uh, there are mainly three stages to develop the, the new sensor. And we are now in the second stage. At the first stage, we tested the, the basic uh, pixel architecture, and we proved it, uh, that it works. And then second stage, we make the first uh, prototype sensor. Uh, and if we f find it works fine, we will make the final prototype, which has the complete uh, image sensor, including the peripheral uh, arc, uh, the circuitry. So uh, this, uh, the, the prototype uh, should be available sometime soon and we will start evaluating it. But uh, to be honest, you know, uh, this uh, confusion due to the COVID-19 uh, delayed this process. Uh, the, all, uh, our partners, uh, our partner uh, to make the, the prototype sensor have been so busy so it's very difficult for them to find the time to make the prototype sensor for us. But uh, th we are making the uh, progress, uh, although it's not as fast as we uh, planned, but uh, we are still working on it. Talking about progress and, and the current situation, another thing that you, you told me last time was about shortage of certain chips for your lenses. Where are we with this? Is it a bit better now so you can deliver lenses to the market or this is also slowing down with uh, design and of course delivery? Uh, the, basically, the, the supply shortage problem still exists. So we, still, we are still facing the similar problem, but uh, the situation for Sigma is getting better little by little uh, because uh, we could uh, now we can buy uh, the, the, the such a, we can, the such a part is available better than before, or we change the design of the, some circuitry in the, in the lens, uh, which uses uh, the chips more easily available. So by working hard uh, through the, our hard work, uh, I think we are making the situation better than before. So we talked about the new lenses, we talked about this amazing office. Anything else that you would like to communicate with our audience before I say thank you and goodbye? First of all, I'd like to say thank you to your audience uh, for their great support to Sigma. Uh, thanks to their great support, uh, to your great support, we could uh, focus on our own work and we could focus on delivering the, the best product uh, to the customers, to our customers, uh, with uh, the, the best price. Um, and uh, we uh, can uh, promise that we will continuously work on that uh, goal and provide the best gears uh, to, our, to your customers or your audience so that they can enjoy the photography and uh, imaging or filming uh, even more. And uh, we will deliver more innovative products uh, moving forward. And uh, I, and also including camera, uh, we are working on the, the new project. So uh, I really hope you look, look forward to the, the new announcement from us. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Really, you want to end the interview with one sentence and leave me like this in the air? I'm so curious <laughs> now. <laughs> okay, I hope when the time comes, we can hear a little bit more about this new camera. Yes. Yamaki-san, thank you very much. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you very much. much. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.